Hello, it's Badrich. This video we will make this Hugo menu that I got here. But first, let me just uh, address uh, the responses here I got from uh, on on the last video here. Um, thank you, everyone, for um, yeah, re really nice with, with all the comments and likes and and uh, not unsubscribing stuff. It 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 kind of. It feels good, even if I was kind of prepared that this could be, uh, yeah, the opposite result of it. Uh, whatever, I can kind of felt a bit weird about the video, even if I also thought it. I managed to to make some some good points in it also, so it it wasn't like terrible. Whatever, it was actually quite good when I think about it. But I have had a really hard time like shaking this whole, I, I have this debate in my head, so to speak, you know, I, I have came up with lots of more arguments, but I don't want to, what, why um, continue this, uh, feed this discussion, you know. Uh, and I pinned this comment, which I was so happy when I saw this comment, it, it really sums up everything and really snapped me out of this weird uh, weird uh, place I was at you know who cares reddit gonna reddit and of course this is just reddit who is being reddit uh, Wolfgang and DistroTube and all the others because I I looked into this a bit uh, apparently I was uh, Wolfgang was really late I, I, I didn't know this was a thing on that uh, you know it YouTube have their different you know, the kids, uh, small kids have their YouTube with like weird uh, candy mass opening videos and whatnot, you know, super strange stuff, you know. And then you have um, the ladies have their <laughs> YouTube with their influencers and testing different makeup and then you have sports YouTube, you have like uh, electronics consumer YouTube and then you have, you might think, Linux YouTube but apparently there are like one other side of the Linux YouTube which uh, kind of Wolfgang and DistroTube is like the tip of the iceberg or what they call it, you know and I kind of got, had a glimpse of that and, and apparently there were like seven response videos on that video uh, and stuff, whatever Reddit's gonna Reddit. Let Reddit be. I am not Reddit. I hope you are not Reddit either. But I hope you are ready to build this uh, stupid menu here in, in with Hugo and HTML and CSS. So I have that page open here and I, now I will... Or let's do this. And then... Uh, the sidebar there. I'm gonna paste this version instead. Ah, oh, that's right. Now I also got this because this is where we left off, except for for this part here. I just added this this loop here, listing all the different posts, so we could use this as a navigation because this will be included now in every post. It's part of the template, you know. Uh, but it's a really stupid, ugly menu. Uh, it's not even... yeah, you get it. It's not good. So uh, I took a look here at my uh, tutorial, HTML tutorial portal of choice, which is W3 Schools, because I like that the examples and stuff is so simple. It's almost in one way too simple you could argue, but whatever, here are the most different uh, navigation bars that you easily can build with simple CSS styling here. Um, and I think, yeah, this this is the one that, that we will copy and, and then we will of course, we will not just do this uh, and then leave it like that, we will keep on customizing on it and, and change all kinds of stuff, but just it, it's just good to have something to build on, you know. Um, and this works like this, you know, you it, it have different colors when we hover the different um, 
elements in, in the menu and one of the buttons here is have a different color green here uh, which uh, to act to show which page is active and here is where Hugo comes in but we, we get back to that here um, and one thing that's important here is that uh, or important but but this is very common when you create a, a, a menu bar like this you usually first create a list uh, UL is, is uh, one type of list and then I think it's called OL and OL stands for ordered list if I'm not mistaken then you will get like a numbered list but you can also change it to be like L A B C D and so on but UL then you usually just get bullet a bullet point list an unordered list so if we add our links here inside ul tags oops automatically close that let's see what we have now now it's the only difference is that it's a bit intended here um, that's because we also need to add each link uh, as a list index here so we also add the li tags here and then we can remove this line break and just do an li there and now we will have this unordered list here with bullet points and then we have a good uh, uh, element here this list to style that into a menu um, and then it's easy here to just we can just add this CSS here and see what what we will get so we add it here to our CSS in our CSS tag we will uh, in the next video I think we will uh, try to manage this CSS stuff a bit and uh, uh, add it into external files instead of having it as internal uh, CSS as we have now but if we just add this and look at this page now it will probably yeah it looks a bit weird you see because it added now this is also a menu because this is also a list and these rules here they apply to all uh, unordered lists and all uh, links in list indexes um, and that means that we need to to um, make so makes do something to to specify that we only should apply this style to our navigation here this list you can do that uh, in in different ways uh, like the the most obvious way is to add an identifier for example a class attribute here and then we can call it nav or something what whatever or navigation whatever save there nothing will appear no visual difference here but we can see in the source code that this uh, list have the class navigation and when you got, got a class then you can add that as a as, uh, to, to narrow down the scope of the css styles here so then we can just add here uh, navigation and the uh, dot here that is that means class so any any a tags within a li tag within a class called navigation will have this styling we need to add this to both here and also this but here we don't need the ul ul specifier here now it's enough with just navigation now if we go back now we can see we only have the style uh, applied to our navigation here so that's one way another way could be to, to instead uh, use the id identifier which kind of works uh, the same way you write id instead of a dot you have a pound symbol hash mark notation like this and it works the same way but id um, should be used like to just identify a specific only one element can have one id is at least how i interpret how it should be used you know 
but it really doesn't make doesn't do uh, isn't any different from class and then you can of course have both an id and a class maybe the id could be top nav uh, and the class could be navigation you see it's it, it, it's very similar to how uh, windows uh, window rules and stuff are, are defined you know then, then we I, I i usually use uh, Here we get a list of all the windows here, and then we can see instance name, the class name, and the title. And this could be thought of as something similar to, to those identifiers in HTML. Um, but there is yet a, a, another uh, way to, to separate this uh, list here in, into a navigation element. Um, and that is to use, um, and I kind of like this, uh, HTML5 uh, new semantic structural elements. And that are special uh, tags that you can use. That doesn't really do, just like these, these attributes, they don't do anything unless you, you say that they should do it with, with for example, CSS here. Uh, same with this, this nav element here, that doesn't do anything. It has no purpose whatsoever except for grouping something into yeah, this nav element here now. And that might just look like weird, why just use stuff that doesn't have any meaning? Uh, and I don't know if you know um, HTML, there is also you know the div tag it's called. And those do the exact same thing. It, it, div and these semantic structural elements are the exact same thing. Except that these have uh, uh, special names. And that makes it uh, easier for, for example, search engines to, to uh, read and interpret your, the content of your page and things like that, you know. And I also think it, it kind of makes the code looks nice. Uh, we can use more of these here later. You, you see there's one tag called article and you have like uh, header, footer and so on. I kind of like this. And if we're going to use this instead, then we, we, we can specify nav here. So everything inside a nav tag or everything inside a a tag inside a list index tag inside a nav tag uh, will have this style when we hover that element that a element that's how you read uh, css rules here and now we have to write nav ul here save that and it should work yes Okay, but how do we make the, the current page uh, element, or what to call it here, green? Meaning, when I click this one post, it should be, one post should be green, and so on. Um, here, they have done it simple like this. Uh, just a rule um, where if the class is active, then the background color should be this, and the uh, foreground color should be white. So, if we would add like uh, class equals active here, for example. And also we can remove these class identifiers now. Save. Now we can see all of them are green, of course, because all of them match this rule now, or this rule match uh, this attribute, this uh, elements attribute here. So all of them will have the active class, but we only want uh, to to make to add this attribute if uh, uh, um, if uh, the element matches the same page. And here's where Hugo comes in. To add this, and we could also add this uh, attribute to the li element, it doesn't really matter here. I don't know which one is correct, if there is any, you know. Or 
maybe that was better, wasn't it? Yeah, because when I add it here, then it's always white here. But if I when it was on, on, on the li element, it had the black color. What whatever. I don't know what which, which one we want. But I guess this was nicer because then we, we see when we hover a green maybe not sorry for this uh, weirdness here we add it here to A okay so if we want to add this to, to with Hugo here uh, we need to make like a test if this is the active pages element uh, add class active here and this will look kind of weird if you have never worked with templates and stuff. Uh, inside these HTML tags here, within these uh, angle brackets here, white space is doesn't mean anything. You can do this, it will do the same thing. You can even do this, it will have the exact same effect here. Uh, and this means that we can do this, and then we can add some Hugo uh, tests here we can do an if and here's yet another weird thing you know normally if you would do an if you would do maybe if this is equal to that that would be a normal way to write an if like right but the uh, Hugo syntax is very much like Lisp syntax syntax so you actually write if equal this that this is how we write that uh, the same if statement here in correct Hugo, which might look really really weird, but that's how it is. And what are we testing here? Um, also remember here now. I hope I don't have any bad tabs here, but yeah, there it got freaked out a bit because we have. Let's uh, remove this. Now it should work, right? Yeah, there it is. Now it says test here in the tab, you know. If I click this, it says another post in the tab. And that's, we did this in the last video. We added this title here in in, um, in the title tag here. And this is like Hugo code grabbing the title of the page we are currently viewing. And here it is, another post, of course. But here we can also see when we create this this list we also use the exact same way of writing it, dot title but here it translates into different titles uh, because here it, uh, the dot uh, that is uh, the dot is referencing uh, the current item in this loop here so and this is kind of what i want to test if this title is the same as this title and that gets a bit weird because we cannot really write uh, if equal dot title dot title that, that, that doesn't make any sense you know that will always be true because it's the same thing um, so how do we access uh, the title from outside of the loop so to speak we do that by prefixing this title, I don't remember is it dollar or maybe it's dot dollar. I think this is how you do it. And also, just like with range uh, loops, all kinds of blocks in in Hugo templates here or Go templates are closed with this uh, ugly end end tag here. And if this is true, then we print our class active and we just add that like this we don't need to add any printfs or anything we just write it write what we want to print in the document if if the test uh, is true i think this yes it worked and now if we go to one post that will have the class active here and we can see the source and see that 
yes, it have active. But also we, we see how messed up the source code gets here. And I'm not sure, uh, because that's also a thing, we, we don't need these line breaks. I just add them to, to make it some, somewhat more readable. But you see how messy it, it easily gets uh, these Hugo templates. It's, but this is, um, you will not find a clean template language. T templating is, is messy business. Um, but I'm not sure it would be nice, you know, to not have the, all this unnecessary white space. Don't know if this works. I have no idea. Save that. No, then it just add this this here. I I'm not sure. The, the sh there is probably a way to remove the the white space from from the source, other than of course just adding everything into one line like this. Because this will, this is completely fine. This will make it look nicer here, the rendered output. But then we get extremely annoying, very difficult to, to read a uh, uh, template here. And I prioritize uh, the template, the looks of the template actually. Then the output of the source code, but maybe I can, I will, uh, yeah, I will look into this because it would be nice to have both nice uh, uh, templates and nice source code. And I'm not sure if you get there because this this is kind of, um, if you understand exactly what's going on here, then you understand a lot what static sites uh, really is and and the power of them, you know, because this means that. Whenever I add a, a post here, it will re regenerate this uh, menu for every page. You know, it have to do that because we have added a new post. Uh, maybe we can do that. You know, or maybe not in that terminal, but in this terminal. There, and then we do Hugo new uh, posts. Hello.md And there, now it created a new post Ah, and that is of course the set to draft here I think, yeah, we could change it so it uh, always, so it doesn't uh, uh, draft our posts, but whatever, not now False Now it will add that element and that means that is added to all uh, all HTML documents, you know, need to be regenerated and, and rewritten and each of them tested for the active post here. You can do a lot of, of interesting things with this. And just understanding this part of it all is, is yeah, it, 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 is, um, it is what it's all about. Whatever. Uh, thank you for watching everybody. Um, Next video, we, we continue with this menu, I guess. Uh, I, have, I have some ideas, you know. I, I want something like this, so very much like this sublime sidebar. With, with um, uh, a menu like the main pages, like at the top here, uh, some, something like this, maybe about, uh, contact, and then we can have like a directory that's called blog, opening that up, it will have subdirectories for each year and month and stuff and yeah, that's where I want to take this and, and that's, um, uh, we have some, a couple of videos till, till we are there, you know. And continue adding styles, separating the documents, we will also look into pipes here soon I thought, because that's a, a feature I haven't used uh, prior to this. Yeah, there's so much cool stuff you can do with, with Hugo. Um, thank you for watching everybody. Have a great day. Bye.